In this video, I'm going to walk you through how this spreadsheet works for doing the species evenness calculations. So let's say that you only found two species, ants and pincher bugs. Um, I've already set up this template, and so what you can type in on line two is individuals per species. So let's say with the ants that you found five ants and three pincher bugs. This, this uh, cell right here is summing the entire numbers from row two. So you can see five plus three is eight. The next row, population ratio per species. And here's a little equation for it. You click on this sum or this formula, you're gonna see that it's doing the number of ants divided by the total number of individuals. So basically what's that, what that's giving us is the percentage that any given individual will be an ant. Um, the probability is 5 eighths. <clears throat> and 5 eighths converted to a decimal is 0 0.625. And these two numbers right here should add up to 1 or 100 percent because either the animal or the organism that you pick at random is going to be an ant, 5 eighths chance, or it's going to be a pincher bug, 3 eighths chance. Now the next line gets a little bit tricky because now we're bringing in the natural log function. And um, natural log is just a function that you can do on a number. In case you want to know, it means e to what exponent will give you the number that's in parentheses. And e is what we call the natural, uh, the natural number, 2.71. All right, so the equation just looks like this. We're taking the probability that any given individual will be an ant we are multiplying it by the natural log of that probability. So whatever we have in cell B4, we're multiplying it times the natural log of what's in B4. And it gives you a number. Um, and the next column, or the next equation, is the sum of all these PI, natural log PIs. And right now it's giving us some funky error. It says dollar sign num, hashtag num, because it doesn't like the fact that it can't do natural log of zero. So one thing that you'll want to do is, if you only found two species, hopefully we find more, delete these other rows here. And just click on them, right click, delete columns, D through J. Now everything is cool. All right, so when it says total, all it's doing is adding up these two numbers. And then the next row here is it's taking that number and just making the opposite. So if it was negative 0.66, now it's 0.66. And this is the actual number that we are left with for a measurement of the species rich species uh, evenness. It's called the Shannon Diversity Index. And let's see how this number changes if we go and change some of these numbers. Let's say that we found an equal number of ants and pincher bugs. So 5 and 5. Total species is 10. Um, did this number go up or go down? I don't recall. It went up a little bit. And when it's a higher number, that indicates greater species diversity. Because now, we still just have two different species, but they're more evenly represented. If you want to think about the most, the lowest possible biodiversity that we could have, would be just one individual of one species. And I'm going to take this away just for a m moment. Um, get rid of it. That way this, this formula will work out. And that gives us a Shannon diversity index of zero. So that's like a horrible case. Uh, worst case scenario or endpoint, you can say. Um, lowest extreme. Let's bring that other data back. And let's say that rather than, what do we have before? We had five and five. Let's double it. Let's say we found 10 ants and 10 pincher bugs. This number has still gone up a little bit. I think it was 0.68. Now it's 0.69. I could be wrong. Let's see if I double the number of ants and double the number of pincher bugs. Well, okay, now it's about the same. So it's just representing that we have two, um, yeah, that's make, that makes sense, two even, evenly represented species. If I bring in a third species, like um, spider, and let's put these numbers back to something reasonable, 10, 5, and 1 spider. Now I'm going to take these formulas, I'm going to copy and paste them over to that. And now we can see that with the introduction of that spider, we get a little bit greater diversity. It was 0 0.69, now it's 0 0.83. And you should see, um, as we continue to add more species, let me just throw in one more here. Um, let's say roly-polies. 
and let's say that we found four roly polies. Take this, copy and paste it over. Now our Shannon diversity index is around 1.16. Generally, for the most amount of biodiversity, you don't see this number go higher than like seven. So what do we call an index? An index just means a number that you can use to get a measurement of something. And they try to do some funny math, like with the natural logs, to try to get numbers that are small so that we can think about them, talk about them, compare them without being some crazy big number or some crazy small number. And in this case, the index varies between zero for completely no biodiversity to a maximum of around seven for awesome biodiversity. Okay? All right, I'll see you later.